Mesut Ozil, Mesut Ozil, um, former German international World Cup winner, um, an absolutely you know star boy of a player in at his prime, signed at Arsenal as probably an indication that Arsenal were trying to achieve big things. They were trying to rewrite the wrongs of the past and trying to basically get back to where they were, right? Challenging for titles, challenging for Champions Leagues and not just winning FA Cups and finishing fourth. So there was a lot riding on Ozu. Ozu was a lot more than just a signing for a club. He kind of was a symbol of where he was maybe an indication of where Arsenal intended to go, what direction they wanted to go to. But if you look at Ozu and you look at kind of his um, playing style and his position actually on the pitch being a conventional number 10 you kind of you should have maybe saw the writing on the wall that his time was going to be over or his time was going to be up especially if you were trying to compete with the Liverpools of this world who play a high pressing style of football which you know for the most part whenever a team is successful in a champ in the Premier League for the most part yeah most most leagues don't like this but in the Premier League if you're the champions and you play a certain way usually the teams below you will also try to implement that style of play in order to kind of emulate because they see it works week in week out so as soon as that kind of heavy metal style of football from Liverpool became the vogue thing and, you know, forwards pressing defenders and pushing up really high and, you know, players um, kind of interchanging positions and being fluid and the whole false nine thing was kind of maybe an evolution of what Pep Guardiola brought to the Premier League. You kind of always felt that Mesut Ozil's time in the Premier League was going to be up or in modern football in general. His position as a number 10 where he sits, basically sits in front of the midfield and behind the strikers and especially just given the luxury to just roam around in the similar sense of like an old school deco right where you just get to pick the ball up be cute move it around manipulate as you please and obviously you get paid the big bucks because you deliver at the clutch moments right when it's needed when your team is one down in a champions league final or champions league semi-final it's 89th minute you produce like a you know a ball that splits the defense that then leads to a cross at least a goal that results in a goal sorry so you know as much as they're a luxury player they're also the player that can actually you know really change things and unlock stuff going forward but you know for some reason whatever it is whether it's his own motivation whether it's the constant changing in managers since Arsene Wenger has left the club it just didn't work out of Mesut and unfortunately in the in the kind of rumble of that stuff I don't know when it happened but somehow somebody in the Arsenal executive board decided it was a good idea to give this guy a new contract and not only any contract he got the contract that Alex Sanchez got he got the contract that David De Gea got where he essentially was getting 200,000 plus playing for Arsenal, right? And I think at the time of writing, it was rumoured that he got about 300,000 a week playing for Arsenal. And considering how inconsistent Ozil was, considering, considering how old he's getting and considering that his position is becoming null and void in a modern game, it was a really ridiculous decision to give him that salary, so to give him that new contract. But he took it, of course, right? He's a footballer. He's, he needs to look after his own interests and the, the, the football... You know, being a football player is a really short career. Um, the industry itself isn't the most... Um, kind when it comes to footballers right if anything the footballers and the fans are the ones that get fucked over the most by the owners or by the clubs they don't necessarily care about us or the players that much you know we're, we're basically in the fans point of view we are we're fiends right no matter what happens that's what united right the glazers have one of the the glazers have essentially taken our club down you know down the dumps ever since alex ferguson has retired retired unfortunately right so there's nothing that they can do that's ever gonna make me stop supporting my united and they know that so they're going to keep taking the piss um, out of the fans, myself, and they're also going to keep taking the piss out of players because they know, by and large, they can always um, make it about the club, quote-unquote, and obviously boot out players by putting out a narrative. And obviously the narrative of those, well, he didn't really help because he's not the most, you know, um, he's not the most pleasing player to the eye when he's not playing well. He just kind of langers around when he's playing, when he's up, when his um, fellow players are getting on him, he tends to shout back and argue. He's got a bit of a... Um, He's got a little bit of a, I don't know, it appears like he's got a bit of a bad attitude on the pitch. I don't think it is. It probably just is his way of internalizing his own frustration in his own game. But he doesn't look good on the eye when he's not playing well. And in this modern game, as I said, with everyone pressing and he's just walking around, it's never going to help. It's never going to work, sorry. So I guess with Arteta coming in for Emery, there was this assumption that somehow Ozil's career was going to get resurrected. But, you know, Arteta was the former assistant coach at Man City. He obviously has seen... Pep Guardiola really um, mold that Man City team into a team that he basically into his team of his liking where he pushed the players to their limits where he kicked out Joe Hart where he was essentially ready to bin Sergio Aguero before he kind of pulled up his socks so if you're Arteta you're not going to give Ozil any special you know 
you're not going to give him any leeway at all. You're going to, if anything, expect the same level of dedication and determination to kind of push and press the opp oppositions or to kind of pull your sleeves up and do the dirty stuff as much as anybody else. He's not going to be a luxury. So when Arteta came in, he didn't play him and sort of resort, um, kind of put him out of the squad and kept him on the bench a couple of times. The rumours started swelling again, you know. It was also the bad egg in the, in the dressing room. He needs to be let go. He's on a massive salary. And this narrative just keeps being pushed out. And again, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't want those on my club, right? He obviously that doesn't seem like the most... Um, easiest of players to have in your squad right especially with his support with Erdogan back in Turkey and he's kind of often you know he, he tends to have some butt heads with the German FA for probably some legitimate reasons but he's not the easiest player to kind of deal with you know he's kind of got a lot of stuff he deals with outside of football that would make his presence at a football club a little bit problematic but Arsenal knew what they got when they signed him. They can't now turn around and say suddenly they're surprised that Ozil has turned into his play. He's always been this guy. So to now turn around and kind of paint him out to be a bad dude is sort of done in bad fashion. And he came out and did an interview with the Atlantic recently and he gave some really insightful quotes as to his time at Arsenal, as to what's actually going on and as to kind of his impression on how the narrative is sort of being written in front of his eyes and how he doesn't really care about it. And it's really eye-opening because you don't usually get players of his caliber or players in his position usually because they're keenly aware of the public perception that they're essentially stealing a living. So they tend to kind of put their head down. They don't want to cause more attention. But players like himself and Bale don't seem to actually care. They are really putting it to their clubs. And I think it's for a fair reason, especially in Bale's case. Bell was, if you believe the rumours to be true, Bell was all set to go to China. And Roman did pulled the plug on that um, deal last minute because they needed to keep him around because they couldn't get the players they needed out or then the players they needed in to replace him in time enough so they need the bodies. And then he doesn't go to China last minute. The company gets told about it. And he's like, okay, F you guys. I'm just going to sit on the bench. I'm going to train hard. So I'm always available for selection so you can never put me in the under 19s or whatever. But that's it. That's the most I'm going to do. And he's done that so far. And it looks like, you know, for the most part, he's going to stay out his contract at Marama and nothing's really going to change. So anyway, here's a quote from the Mezzo Ozil interview that I thought were pretty eye-opening. I'm going to get up here on the screen for you. Bear with me a sec. Boom. So this is it. Someone posted it. It's on Atlantic. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find it. So this is Mezzo Ozil speaking. says, um, this was not fair, especially for the young guys and I refused. I think this is to, regarding his refusal to take a pay cut during the whole COVID-19 thing, right? The, do you remember the beginning where they were trying to make out as if the players were the ones that were to blame? They should take some pay cut when it's actually the owners of the of these clubs that are, you know, taking in a massive salary that are quick to let go of staff members before they take a pay cut themselves. It's just a complete hot, a load of bullshit, but you know how it is. Anyway, he continues, says here, this is not fair, especially for the young guys and I refused. I had a baby at home. I have commitments to my family here in Turkey and in Germany, to my charities and to, and also new projects we started to support people in London. That was from the heart and not for publicity. And it's even, you know, reading this, it's actually annoying he even has to say this. You don't have to justify how you spend your money. If the club are dumb enough to order, to give you a contract in that excess, because again, reg like, regardless of what you think about Ozil as a player, there's no way anyone playing in the Premier League, I don't think there's any, any player in the Premier League now that can legitimately say that they deserve £300,000 a week. That should be reserved for the elites of the elites, right? The Neymars and up should be getting that kind of wage. Maybe even the, I don't know who's a good example. Like people in that kind of bracket, if anything, right? The players underneath that, no one should be earning that much. It, sh it should never be a thing. But, you know, again, agents, player, I mean, agent power or clubs being run by agents maybe has something to play in this. <coughs> it continues, it says, people, know who, people who know me know exactly how generous I am. And as far as I'm aware, I was not the only player who rejected the cut in the end, but only my name came out. I guess that's because it's me and people have been trying to for two years to destroy me, to make me unhappy, to push an agenda they hope they will turn the supporters against me and paint a picture that is not true. That's very, very true what he's saying there. I think that whole thing about leaking his name, because I wasn't a fan of it anyway. I think the optics were bad when players are rejecting, taking the pay cut when there's a global pandemic going on. It's not going to look good. But in context, when you understood what the clubs the clubs involved, when you understood the fact that they have shady owners and the, the staff were not actually look, looked after in that whole exchange you can definitely understand why some of the players were kind of hesitant as to why they should take a pay cut and where that money was actually going to go in the first place and if uh, Mesut Ozil's name to be leaked that was highly unprofessional whoever did leak it no money that's super disgusting because at the end of the day he's still playing for your club what you want what you want to do do you want the play imagine if this was worse than what it is which is already bad and then somehow the supporters took this personally and were kind of you know 
rocking up to his house Edward Wood style and wanting to you know demand answers from him and his family like that's really really irresponsible so I definitely agree with him in that the fact that he's saying that he thinks he's trying to turn the supporters against him I don't think that's true I think the supporters are against him largely I don't think anyone apart from Ty from AF AFTV likes Ozil I think everyone sort of kind of turned off of him I think any player that kind of outstays their welcome when it's clear that they're not going to be picked by the manager is always going to rub um, fans up the wrong way even if they understand that you're staying because you know you have a family to support and it's a job at the end of the day no one's going to look at it well because they do see it as you know you you are you're kind of taking away money from the club you know I definitely can understand his position in it but i'm sure the fans aren't going to forgive him any sooner it continues here it says possibly decision affected my chances on the pitch i don't know but i'm not afraid to stand up for what i feel is right and when you are and when you see what happened now with the jobs maybe i was definitely true considering how bad they dealt with that i don't know winning the fa cup and a week later they let go of 50 people it's just like what are you guys doing man arsenal pr terrible it says here, in 2018, I had plenty of options that would have earned me far more money on a free agent, but I committed myself to Arsenal because this is the club and the fan base I wanted to play for. In that sense, nothing has changed. Mikel knows my quality and I'll be ready when he needs me. This we can obviously dispute. Um, I'm sure staying in London and earning 350k with your family settled, you feeling settled, because I'm sure he probably doesn't feel that comfortable in Germany anymore after what people from the German FA, and I think that guy from Bayern Munich said about him, right? Highly unprofessional, the things that they said about him, disparaging his name and kind of calling his character into question. I'm sure he feels more comfortable here in London. There's a big Turkish population here, probably got extended family. I live here for sure, but to suggest that somehow there is, it's all about the love of the club. It's like, come on, it's a bit rich. If you love the club you would have just packed your bags and left already because you're you're hurting the club by staying because every week when um Arteta doesn't pick you it turns into the Mesut Ozil circus right and it continues it says yeah I'm not going into preseason thinking final year I can chill I know I don't play these are not easy times for Arsenal and I want to help I still have a lot to offer and I train as hard as I can, whether I'm in the squad or not. If you're called in, you have to be prepared. I'm doing all the necessary work on the pitch with the fitness coach and the gym. That's all I can do, which is interesting because I think he posted a video on his Instagram that he quickly deleted of him training in his garden. It's just footballers have the worst, um, have the worst, um, what do you call it? Have the worst reading of the room, innit? They don't know what they're doing in that regard. But hey, I, I rate him for standing up for himself. <clears throat> he continues here, says, People will always love, love or hate you. And the main thing is that the people who know you and what you, what they think. That's true. What the people outside say about my play or my character is irrelevant. They just speak bullshit to make publicity and they know nothing. They know by using my name, it will bring them attention, which is definitely true. It says, um, do it as much as you like. I don't care or listen to people who don't know me. I didn't get here because of them, but because of the family and friends who trust and I always be behind me, which is really true. I think the, the criticism about his style of play and how he kind of conducts ourselves on the pitch are, is valid. I think we've seen it with the criticism towards Anthony Martial, which I thought was a bit, um, was a little bit, um, you know, it kind of lacked on the insight saying Anthony Martial wasn't committed because he had a sad face. I think if you actually watch him play for Man United week in, week out, you clearly know he's one of our better players, if not our best player in, in terms of consistently always kind of... Uh, contributing to the team's success he's definitely been up there with someone like a Paul Pogba over the last four or five years but he has to understand he's kind of where he kind of walks around the pitch and slumps around when he's not having a good game isn't the best you know thing to go especially in this era and also the fact that his position is becoming null and void no one needs number 10s anymore they're a bit of a luxury you know players can get or teams can get away with having a number eight playing in that position box to box maybe even a really creative number six that can you know imagine a far more competitive version of like a Georgino right that can also or maybe like a Fabino as a good example right that can spray a ball that can obviously a support attack when needs be but can also screen the back line so to have somebody that just sits in front of the midfield and behind it, the strikers picking a ball up turning being cute and clipping balls over the top it's a complete luxury so he has to obviously realize that or kind of change his game up to accommodate such a thing because unfortunately number 10 is his position they're, they're now drifting out to the wings they're pulling back to that number six position number four position you really need to be a little bit more um have a little bit more um, weapons in your arsenal in order to kind of succeed nowadays <clears throat> and then lastly he says but i wish people would have done the same for the muslims because arsenal have many muslim players and the fans as well as it's important for the world to say that muslim lives matter which obviously i'm guessing is to do with the whole um deal in china 
with Arsenal and the situation going on there with the native um, Muslim cities, uh, population out there that have been put in those kind of weird concentration camps, conversion camps sort of things. But, you know, that that's a bit of a stretch for him to say that the club should support his political leanings is a bit of a stretch. Um, that's obviously not what's going to happen. And I'm pretty sure he should be aware of that. Uh, but yeah, I'm a fan of him coming out and kind of backing himself in this regard. I don't think it's going to help his chances with the Arsenal fan base. I think they've made up his, their mind about him, but I still think it's a good indication as to the shift that's happening now in football. Clubs for the longest time were fucking players over, you know, essentially promising them one thing and doing the other, binning them when maybe they haven't been given a fair crack of the whip or, you know, changing managers midway through their first season at the club. Just whole really horrendous things that, in general, you know, upset a lot of players, ruin a lot of careers and set people back a few seasons. So to have a player kind of finally stand up and say, hey, it's your fault for giving me this contract. I didn't put a gun to to give me this contract. I had other offers. I could have gone after my time was kind of like up in 2018. You gave me 350 bags a week. What am I going to do? Say no. You know what I mean? So I definitely get him in that regard, but I'm sure people like DT and stuff and Turkish on the FTV are going to go ham on this because this does sound a bit entitled. It does sound a little bit like a player that's happy to just sit on a bench and not play and collect his wages, which is not what you want to see in football. But you have to under, you have to accept, man. Some players out there were just... I'm sure as well he's stuff he's gone through in his life might just mean that he's just he's just over it he just treats it like a job now and if someone plays and they play him he's gonna be he's always gonna be professional right i think that's kind of the quote-unquote immigrant mentality right you're never gonna take the piss out of the job that you have you're just gonna do the best that you can but in terms of giving anything more he's not willing to do that and you know this is like similar to when you work in an office or you work in a workplace somewhere. As soon as you pass the probation, it's effectively impossible to get rid of you, right? It, obviously, if you haven't, then they can do whatever sort of nonsense, you know, make up KPIs and reviews and stuff and kind of get you out there and say, oh, you're not matching up our moral, our level of standards, even though the standards change every week. But in general, if you pass a probation, you're done, isn't it? You're pretty much cool. Hopefully you didn't hear that beeping there, but hey. But yeah, big up Ozil. Hopefully this works out for him and I'm sure the Arsenal fans are going to be raging, but you know, it's always good to see Arsenal fans get angry, isn't it? Always good.